I could not really find opportunities to uh, make income or something right in the first year by doing DSA. I am getting all my gigs from open source only. There is no college that right now who is teaching you Kubernetes or teaching you open source. If you are looking forward to contribute to a huge project like Kubernetes or Istio that I'm contributing to right now, it is very overwhelming. In C and CF, if you are asking, I have always come across Golang as one of the tech stack which is very helpful. In this video, you will learn how to get LFX mentorship, how to be involved with CNCF landscape, and moreover, how you can get jobs while making open source contributions. I am Sanskar, and you are watching the Sanskar Show. So, my first question is, how did you get involved with CNCF LFX? I mean, did you do DSA? Like, what guided you to go in that direction? Yeah, even like I was always very passionate about uh, studies. From um, since my childhood, I've always took leadership positions, and I always wanted to explore as much as I can, learn as much as I can. So when I just dropped in my first year, as I, as soon as I got in, I was like, "What do I start doing now?" Because I did not want it to do what my college uh, was teaching. I wanted exposure of what the world is doing. So that's why right. I came on Twitter. I joined spaces. I used to host spaces back then in my first year, and that's where I realized that a lot of people keep talking about doing data structures and algorithm, even though that was not a part of our syllabus in the first year itself. But I started right. doing DSA right over my like in my first semester itself, and people were quite, uh, you know, confused. Wow, you're doing DSA, and then I started doing it, and that is when I realized I could not really find opportunities to uh, make income or something right in the first mm-hmm. year by doing DSA. So you know you always need something to keep the motivation going, and that is mm-hmm. why I thought, okay, let's do freelancing. For that, I will need to learn okay. web development. So <laughs> I completely changed my field towards web development, mm-hmm. and I started doing more stack. Because if you see in open source, if you are looking forward to contribute to a huge project like Kubernetes or Istio that right. I'm contributing to right now, it is very overwhelming because that project took like years to build and come to the state that it is right now at. So a student like me who is just in her second year, it becomes very difficult for a person to actually just get in and start coding. So it is definitely very overwhelming. It would be stupid of us to say right. that you can just get into open source, start, pick up the issues, and start solving. It is very overwhelming at first. It's not easy for anyone. Neither was it easy for me. You mentioned something very interesting that folks, for folks, it's very overwhelming to contribute to open source projects as a student, right? So I want to ask you, what sort of experience is required? I mean. at what stage of their development learning journey can someone decide ki ha now is the right time for me to try open source and contribute to open source projects so i'm also in my third year right. you could uh, definitely say i do not have any uh, industry experience or i do not i while i was just starting out i did not have experience or much knowledge about it so hmm. anyone who is willing to uh, you know keep contributing was willing to find out uh, was willing to uh, work for free put out their hours put out their uh, you know uh, all their energy right. without expecting something in return apart from your apart from the experience and knowledge can any time start even without any uh, okay. skills or anything you will gain skills you will have to learn skills along the way but it is not right. a prerequisite that you should have something in order to start you can just start from day 1 be mm-hmm. it any non technical area that you contribute to get it towards the technical area what is your motivation but you can start any time that is how i did i wasn't waiting for learning skills and then starting with contributions right 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 so is there any particular tech stack faiga which you feel ki ha this tech stack has a slight edge when it comes to contributing to projects i mean javascript is widely used so is there sort of a thing or how is it like in c and cf if you are asking i have always come across golang as one of the uh, okay. tech stack which is very helpful because most of the projects that i have come across be it kyverno um, mm-hmm. and in, even in kubernetes there are several pro- uh, sub projects that do use golang so it is very good if you want to contribute to the code aspects of thing it will be right. very helpful for you to know golang Uh, Java is also somewhat helpful. 
and yaml files if you know to write them i have been writing policies so mm-hmm. these are the things uh, that i use majorly golang and knowing kubernetes in itself so like i am preparing for my cka exam so i already had information about kubernetes i knew how kubernetes works i right. had the architectural knowledge of it the functional knowledge of it so that was also very helpful for me so if you are wanting to contribute to a project like this you should have knowledge about it similarly for istio uh, istio right. is again a service mesh technology so for that you can have knowledge about istio if you want to contribute to that project and golang is very versatile it is something that is used in almost all of these projects so that is one thing so you mentioned that you wanted industry experience that's why you switched from dsl development and then you found open source and started contributing right but uh, the thing with most of students in india fica is that they want a job right their main aim is to get a job how they don't care they want a job right now the most highlighted path of that is doing dsa solving problems and giving interviews building projects now why should someone skip that path or rather not go with that path and choose open source cncf like can they get a job through open source and cncf as well definitely i am getting all my geeks from open source only like even right now i just one and i i just completed i just graduated from linux foundation mentorship program uh this month and i got my next gig in open source itself that is right now i got my next gig in o- kaiverno project okay. so all the opportunities almost all the opportunities almost i'm getting it from open source the best part why i just left doing dsa you should not leave dsa completely you should mm-hmm. always have knowledge of problem solving that comes from dsa but right. i i'm not a competitive programmer anymore which i used to do back right. in my Correct. first year i thought i should be very good in dsa but now i'm not mm-hmm. doing that thing because that's a very traditional path and if you are an indian it becomes even more challenging for you because in india almost everyone right. is doing dsa it is such a right. competitive path uh, for you to crack interviews because everyone is doing dsa and the, the opportunities are a little less and right. that is why it becomes very competitive most of the people are like looking for fang and all these things right. that's really good but i'm not uh, i just feel that it is a little more competitive than open source <laughs> i think if you get into open source you'll find really good opportunities and it won't take as much information but yeah in open source you will always have to keep exploring whereas in the case of dsa it's like just do dsa you have right. to look here yeah. and there and the person gets their opportunity but in case of open source yeah. you have to keep your eyes over everything you have to be very versatile you need to do multiple tech stacks you can't just keep learning one thing you have to be always exploring talking with people networking there are several things and when it came to me i am way more versatile than working on just one thing so while i was working right. dsa i almost lost my motivation because i <laughs> cannot work on just one thing without any other yeah. around I, i love exploring everything so that is why i found myself way more suited to open source than dsa but dsa in itself is also a very okay. good path if you are looking for it and now let's go deeper into how you got your job right how you got your opportunities with the open source right now take any one example which you mentioned earlier and tell me that exactly what do you feel you did right in that particular time period to get to that opportunity how you got it i, I mean in that opportunity what was your role as well okay so how i got my opportunities it's uh, i would also say that uh, being a part of communities helps a lot so uh, i've seen lots of people who do dsa or even the people who are uh, who have really good knowledge uh, who have really good technical expertise but they're not a part of the community so that is why it becomes a little difficult for them to you know grasp all these opportunities that are available in the society so you want those opportunities you need to be visible and that visibility comes by being a part of the community by networking with people by talking with everyone so i guess that helps a little it's not it doesn't help completely that okay you're just going to all the community events and you will assume that you'll get a job no it's not like that you need to present your skills you need to work on your skills and you also need to be a part of the community so that you bring visibility to those skills and i think that is something that i did right i had both these things aligned i was not just going in community events i was just not organizing events but i was also making sure that i'm also improving my technical skills alongside and that is where, what helped me a lot so i would say what i did right in order to get these opportunities was uh, always being a part of community while also managing my uh, study schedule 
I have been an organizer of several events. I have been a part of several community initiatives, like I already mentioned in the beginning. So while I was a part of these things, people recognized me. Now, just recognizing doesn't work. You need to go through the interview processes. You need to go through the application round and stuff. So I would say if you're a part of the community, it will help your resume get shortlisted. If you're part of community, because you have the visibility. But getting yourself through the interview rounds, that is where your technical skills will help you. So that is what I have noticed that some people have really good technical expertise, but their resumes don't get shortlisted because their visibility is not enough. Whereas there are some people who have really good visibility who are working a lot for the community, but they do not have enough technical skills. And that is why they get their resumes shortlisted, but they do not clear the interview rounds. So about Linux Foundation mentorship, I was already contributing to open source. That is something that really helped me. I was already a part of the weekly discussions. I used to always regularly join the weekly meetings of Istio. Right, so okay. when I was joining them, they used to see me come through. They used to see... Uh, they used to discuss things. I used to put my opinions. And that is how okay. they I, I gained visibility in the community. Okay, she's someone who's regularly coming to the meetings. Right. So she is someone we can give an opportunity to. And that is how I got the Linux Foundation mentorship opportunity. To give everyone a, le- a realistic picture of how a contribution looks like, can you also share an example of a contribution which took you a very long time for that PR to get merged? So there are PRs that take a lot of time when the PR is about 500 to 600 lines of code, which was a, which is a PR that is right now I'm working upon. So it takes a lot of time working on it, definitely. So uh, the challenging part of it is, I think Git is a really amazing tool. It keeps a log of everything. You will make changes. Mm-hmm. Everything is logged. It helps you so much uh, to co-author a commit or even have suggestions and feedbacks from the community directly on GitHub. So it's a very simple, it, it's a very good process throughout. But uh, the best part of working on long PRs like this, which takes a lot of time to get merged, is that that you are, it's not just you contributing to it. There are several mm-hmm. people right. always on the lookout to review those PRs. And that was the best part when I was working on long line p- uh, codes on uh, GitHub. So when I was, I just pushed the code, I, while it is in the PR section, people come from the community, the maintainers come, the reviewers come and review it. And that is where you get a lot of help from the community while you're working on a certain thing. You you get different ideas and different opinions of people to work right. on the same line of code. That is the best part when you're working on long things. It doesn't happen when you're working on a project or anything, personal project or whatever, because there you have to do everything by yourself. But when it is open source and you're working on an open source PR, that is a pull request. So the fun part is everyone is there to review it. What is the best way for a student in the college right now to get a taste of CNCF of open source? Like they want to choose between doing DSA development, contributing to open source, but they're not sure. So how can they get a starter or a taste of what open source contributions look like? What is the best way they can do that? Hmm. So yeah, I, when it was KubeCon, the same, there was a similar question that came in. Okay. Does colleges help you with open source CNCF? So the answer is obviously no. There is no college that right now who is teaching you Kubernetes or teaching you open source. No college, I think. Right. None of the college in India are currently is teaching open source. If there is, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that college exists. <laughs> I'm not sure if there is any. But I have not found any college that te- teaches you open source and stuff. So the best way as a student to get into these things is to yourself lead a CNCF community. Not a CNCF yeah. community. We call it, I guess, cloud native community groups, something like that. And okay. becoming a part of these community groups locally in your city or in your college is something, uh, some way, some some sort of like really good way to get into this field. So okay. if you want to get into CNCF, join these communities and these communities exist everywhere. And if it is not there in your city, develop one. So you get a lot of support from Cloud Native Computing Foundation too, to create a community like this of your own. So there is a CNCF mm, Pune, okay. there is a CNCF Thane, CNCF in all of those cities. So become a part of this community as a student. You get a lot of community help in your locality. And at college level also, you can have such groups because I also opened a group at my college so that I have like okay. around 500 folks who are very interested in cloud native from my college. So now everyone is coming together, learning about it. They found it interesting. <laughs> yeah. That's how things go around. Can anyone do that? That start a community or is any experience required to do that? 
anyone can do that if you okay. know if you have leadership skills you can do that okay yeah it's awesome. not that you need to see thank you so much faika for joining this conversation sharing oh, your thank experience thank you so much for having me loved it